Welcome. This is NKBA, and you are here for a first webinar of the month on designing with surfaces. Today's session is called Natural Stone versus Engineering Materials for Kitchen and Bath Applications with Derek Campbell. He's the Regional Sales Manager of Stone Mart. We also want to thank Kohler for their generous sponsorship for sponsoring all of our webinars for the month of August. And Derek, if you're there, we're ready to get started, please. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, well, I should say good afternoon, East Coasters. Good morning, West Coasters. As Debbie said, I am um, I'm Derek Campbell. I am the regional sales manager of Stone Mart here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, we are a supplier of natural stone slabs, so granite, marble, quartzite, soapstone, uh, a supplier of engineered quartz materials, as well as porcelain, large format porcelain slab materials. Um, I'm also the president of the Indiana chapter of the National Kitchen Bath Association. Uh, I've, this is my last year. I will be moving down to the, uh, um, I am going to be uh, the programs uh, person moving forward next year. So I'm excited about that. That's how I started and I'm getting back to that because I like to plan all the parties and all the social events. So anyway, um, that's it. So today's um, subject is natural stone versus engineered materials for kitchen and bath applications. This is uh, by no means a, a battle of, uh, of natural stone versus uh, engineered material. All of these are fantastic options for kitchen and bath applications. Uh, I just try to educate clients and uh, consumers the the pros and cons because they all some perform better than others in certain applications so that's part of the goals that we're going to have today is to get a, a little bit better uh, grip on how certain materials perform in certain applications so that being said we'll just move to the next one here and oh there we go all right so today we're going to learn the pros and cons of the following so we're going to talk about granite quartzite marble, travertine, soapstone, engineered quartz, which is the man-made material. Porcelain is also man-made. And then onyx and, and we'll, we'll dabble into a little bit of onyx and precious gemstone materials. So we base everything on the Mohs hardness scale. So every, every material out there has a, has a Mohs scale. And it goes, you know, one is the softest and 10 is the hardest. Um, so, you know, talc, which is soapstone, that is going to be your softest material. Uh, and then you just rank. So if, if you're looking at engineered, if you're looking at quartz, um, that's around a six and a half, seven. And then so as you go up, obviously it's harder. So a, a quartz could actually scratch um, a marble, which is calcite. Uh, and, and so you just go off the hardness of those things. Any questions on, well, I guess not. <laughs> so we'll, let's get into granite. These are a couple of applications. There's a kitchen application and a bath application of, of natural stone, which is granite here and for these two pictures. So granite on the Mohs scale is anywhere from a six to a seven. Granite is a natural material. It, it comes out of the ground. It is mined and processed at, at factories and then uh, gets over here um, via a boat. Uh, granite has high heat, scratch, etch, and stain resistance. Um, there's minimal maintenance that's needed with granite. Mild dish soap and warm water is really all you need to clean the material. And there's a lot of misperceptions out there about how often you have to seal granite. 12 to 15 years ago, they weren't sealing granite when they were um, put into the kitchen application or bath application. This came around uh, about a, a little bit over a decade ago when they started actually sealing it as an industry standard. So if you know anybody that has had granite that's 12, 15 years old, it was never sealed. And it probably looks the same as it did the day it went in. Um, so the, the sealer now as an industry standard is a 15 to 25 year sealer that the fabricator will put on the material generally at installation, uh, of the finished product. And 
you, you really won't need to seal it again. Um, you'll probably sell the house or remodel before you would need to seal it. So that's that's one of the misconceptions that I hear quite often when people come in and talk about the maintenance that granite has and that, that they want to try to avoid. So um, keep that in mind that it's not necessarily uh, you don't the sealing is not an issue with with granite. Um, cleaning it, you don't have to buy a special cleaner to clean granite. Like I said, mild dish soap and warm water is really all you need. And really mild dish soap and warm water is all you need to clean any material that we're going to talk about today. Uh, just make sure you get the residue off, the soapy residue off as you're as you're washing it uh, and cleaning it, or else you'll just get a soapy buildup. Uh, granite is excellent for kitchen and bath applications. Um, it could go anywhere. Again, they you know you can cut on granite. Uh, you you will probably um, dull your knife before uh, you uh, damage the granite when you're cutting on it. I've got a couple uh, a couple questions here. What about the porosity of granite and staining? Again, uh, granite is a porous material um, in, in the sense that uh, it is a rock, uh, but it, the vast majority of material today that comes from the quarries, they are um, they are. Oh, I'm getting ahead of here. I'm getting, losing questions. Um, a lot of questions came through. Sorry. So uh, they are resined to begin with. So what they do is they will take the slabs and they and they will they will cut them out of the mountain, and then they uh, they will cut them out of the block and then they resin coat and then they put the finish on it. So first of all, the resin creates an initial barrier on that, and then when it gets over here and then it gets before it gets into your kitchen or bath application the uh, the fabricator will put a sealer on it and so that will uh, then make it a, a, a non-porous i mean it, it's it's still it's natural stone it's nothing is stain resistant but it makes it uh, even more stain resistant than before um, so i wouldn't necessarily worry about staining in in that sense Again, the caveat is you put a staining agent on any type of material and let it sit long enough, it could eventually penetrate any material that we're talking about today. So that's, you know, we always keep that in mind. Um, the highest temperature granite can handle before damaging the stone. There isn't really a, a, a number tied to that. Um, there are certain things in some stones, you know, when you have, uh, uh, you know, you, you have some materials that are in uh, granite that could be a softer material, uh, some minerals that are in there, like uh, uh, mica is something that, you know, you can you can actually burn. Um, it's, it's like a, a, a reflective piece of uh, material that's in some some granites uh, but overall it is a rock at the end of the day and it can it can withstand a higher heat there is a higher heat tolerance than quartz than engineered quartz when it comes to that level uh, of temperature between the two materials um, there are various qualities of granite sealers what ingredients features should we be looking for in a sealer there <laughs> The, the sealers, um, that's not really what I do because I have the raw slabs here. Um, the fabricators, uh, you know, there are a lot of great companies out there. Hydro Shield is one. Dry Treat is, is often used uh, pretty heavily uh, in the fabrication side. And that is more on the fabricators who, who do that. Um, so, but if you, and, and there's also sealers that you can buy, you know, you can go to the box stores and, and buy a sealer if you were really concerned about wanting to make sure you're, you're putting sealer on it, even though it's not necessary, but I would try to buy the, the nicer sealers, I, I guess the more expensive sealers than, than something that's, that you can just spray on. Some of them, when you're, when you're doing a sealer, you uh, basically, it's, it's generally a liquid and you, you put the application on the granite and then you just let it um, penetrate and it just penetrates just under the surface so that nothing will it will help prevent things from, from seeping down in it 
So granite, uh, granite is acceptable for all outdoor applications. Um, I wouldn't worry about putting granite outside uh, and, and letting it be exposed to the elements. If you have a covered outdoor application, it, it's I wouldn't worry about that either. But when I when I have an uncovered uh, application for an outdoor kitchen, you the darker stones like a like a, a black absolute or a black pearl, um, those can get very hot uh, if, if sun is beating down on it in the middle of August and it's been there all day. So you you need to be uh, aware of that that the material some materials hold heat more. And so if it's exposed to a lot of sunlight, then some of that material could be hot to the touch at certain times of the day. Um, and there are some materials that if you see a lot of fissures and you're in one of a freeze thaw area of the country, um, if, if, there are, if there are fissures in some of the materials, some materials aren't acceptable for uh, that kind of application because water can get within the within the fissures and um, uh, can can expand as it freeze thaws so that could be an issue so if you're in that kind of atmosphere um, and just almost put it away for the put it away for the winter time you could you could you know put a put a cover over it uh, if you don't use it in the winter time and, and that could be a way to um, help help make that last a little bit longer uh, will granite rust over time? So there are granites um, that have iron in them. So not all granites have iron, so they won't rust. But there are some natural stones that have iron in them. And those I wouldn't really recommend uh, for being outside. But there are a lot of granites that obviously are, are okay with that. Um, it, it could rust over time if it's if there's a lot of a lot of moisture that sits on the on the material um, and that that's again if that's exposed to the elements year round um, at all times it, it, if there's a lot of water that sits on it um, it could pull some of the rust out um, and expand but it does t it would it does take time and it, it, it would change over the years if it's if it's got constant exposure that is if it has iron in it how often do you clean the top? I want to clean the top main thing that affects how long the sealer lasts. So if you're using a, a harsher abrasive cleaner, um, something with more chemicals, that can affect the polish over time. Um, and and, and the sealer as well. I mean, because it, if you're using a harsher, uh, more abrasive cleaner, uh, often it would get into the uh eventually eat away at the polish and and the um um you know you you would need to either have somebody come resurface it um resurface polish it to fix it all out and they could seal it again um or you just you know it's just you call it like a living finish it, it takes a while it, it's going to take a long time for that to happen um, but you would see it years later. You could probably see where you've cleaned more around uh, the like the uh, faucet. If you have hard water and you're trying to do, you know, trying to clean it that way. Um, but an abrasive, a hard abrasive cleaners and, and things that you use all the time on any of the materials will, will eventually uh, affect every material that we're going to talk about today. What about the granite that are honed or leathered? Granite that is honed and leathered does not perform differently than a polished in terms of heat resistance, um, stain resistance, scratch resistance, and etch resistance. It is a it's a texture um, difference. When you have a when you have a textured material, especially if it's a dark material, if you have a sweating cup. And it's it's sitting on the material. It will look wet. You'll have a water ring on it, where the water it looks like the stone is is um, actually taking on water. Um, but you you can dry it off. It already evaporates. So um, you don't notice it on the polish as much because it kind of the the wetness kind of blends in with the with the shine of the polish. 
So that's something I always tell clients too when they when they've got a leathered or honed material. If it's a darker material, it will look wet um, when it's wet, but that does not mean that it is taking on water and it is not a stain. It's just it's just wet right there, and uh, you you dry it off or it evaporates and goes away. If you want to know what's what's in granite, who would you contact? Uh, the fabricator does. I mean, the fabricator will know material. Um, the supplier should know what's in the material as well. What what's in a, a certain granite? Um, so any any one of those professionals would be able to tell you what the nature and the makeup of that that slab would would be. Any more questions on granite? All right. All right. Quartzite. So this is there's always a lot of confusion on quartzite, which is the natural material that comes out of the ground this way versus engineered quartz. So we'll, we're going to get into uh, we'll talk about quartzite now, but quartz is engineered. Quartzite is natural, comes out of the ground looking like this. So on the Mohs scale, quartzite is a seven, which is which is harder than granite. It's a natural material. It's high heat, scratch, etch, and stain resistant. Um, calcium carbonate, we're going to get back to that in a second. Um, minimal maintenance, uh, again, mild soap, warm water to clean. It comes in polished and textured uh, finishes as well. Uh, it's excellent for kitchen bath applications, acceptable for outdoor applications. What I say about calcium carbonate, when you, when, when people Google when you Google quartzite and people say my quartzite etched, my super white quartzite etched or my fantasy brown quartzite etched, that's because it's not a quartzite. There's there's marble in those materials and those are dolomites. That's the, the actual makeup of those materials. Quartzite will not react to normal household acidic items. So it won't react to lemon juice, lime juice, vinegar, pasta sauce, tomato juice. I mean, it won't, it won't react to anything that, that is a normal household acidic item that you would run into in a kitchen and bath application. Um, what is, what is reacting is the marble that is in that material. Marble will etch uh, on anything that has, you know, the, anything that's acidic and etching takes the polish off it, it, it looks like a dull spot on the finish of it so quartzite is doesn't have that issue there's a lot of mislabeling of material out, out there and, and that's unfortunate because you don't want a client thinking that they have a quartzite and their first party were cutting up a bunch of limes for all the coronas and margaritas that they have etch marks all over their their brand new marble top that they thought was a quartzite The question I've been told by certain fabricators, quartz is better than quartzite. Is there a difference? Um, they're again, they're both acceptable uh, kitchen and bath application materials. However, quartz, engineered quartz, um, you cannot take a pot of boiling water and set it directly on quartz. You can burn the material. You can burn the quartz slab if you take a pot of boiling water and set it directly on an engineered quartz material. Quartzite, on the other hand, you can take a pot of boiling water and set it directly on the quartzite and it's not going to affect it. Quartzite generally has a higher polish uh, on it because it is a slightly harder material than granite. So when you see these beautiful polishes uh, and on a marble looking material, it's generally going to be a quartzite and, and, and they, it just absolutely it feels different if you guys haven't felt the difference between a a nice quartzite polish finish and, and any other material. Quartzites are getting more and more popular uh, now, and that's why we're this is becoming an issue. Uh, it used to take, it, it takes about uh, four hours to, to process a block of regular granite. 
it used to take several days to process a block of quartzite. So because they're, it's such a hard material and, and so they would get blocks and, and they weren't processing them. They were processing a bunch of granite, but now the technology has gotten better. And with diamond blade technology, uh, they're processing quartzites at a faster, at a, at a much faster uh, pace than what they used to. So now you're seeing a lot of quartzites that are hitting, hitting the markets. Um, and, and with that, uh, there's a lot of mislabeling of material that, that the makeup truly isn't a, a, a quartzite all the way through. There may be quartzite in it, but there's also marble in it, calcium carbonate. So I would always just call that, you know, it's a dolomite is what it is. It's a harder marble. So my lost volume. Can anybody else hear me? You're good, Derek. Okay. All right. Um, so um, with that, uh, we're what? Sorry, I got thrown off by the volume. Um, so we're with, with that, with with the amount of, of materials coming out, technically to be called a quartzite, 75% of the material that is in the slab is quartzite. And then that leads up to 25% of other minerals, which is generally calcium carbonate. <clears throat> so you know, people, people can call it a quartzite, I guess. I call it a dolomite. I treat it's a harder marble um, because it will etch. So there are true quartzites out there. And so if, if, you, if, you're, if you're buying from me and, and I call it a quartzite, it's going to be a quartzite, uh, you know, and, and a lot of suppliers are learning that, you know, even though there's quartzite in it, if there is, if there is calcium carbonate in it, it's a dolomitic marble would be the better way to, uh, to classify that material. Um, why is it called quartzite? There's marble in it. So it is, that's, it's called quartzite because 75% of the makeup is quartzite. And that's, that's the definition of it. at least 75% of it has to be a quartzite. And then that leads up to 25% of, of generally a dolomitic marble that's within that. Um, the price versus granite, um, Quartzite is generally a little bit on the higher end, but there is still granite that's more expensive than any quartzite out there. You, granite can be cheaper, the same price, and more expensive just because there's so many options of granite. Uh, but quartzite tends to be on, on, the, on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of pricing. Um, what materials can you use under counter induction burner with the type of burner that is hidden? I don't know enough about counter induction burners. Um, I, 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 you, I would have to say type of burner that is hidden. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, granite would be fine. I mean, because granite has high heat tolerance. Soapstone has high heat tolerance. Quartzite has high heat tolerance. Um, Decton is engineered. Yes, you can use Decton. Uh, you can use any any porcelain material. I would probably um, avoid engineered quartz because I don't know how I don't know where the heat uh, how close it is to heat on on that counter induction uh, I just don't know enough about the the oven that you're talking about uh, if put outside will quartzite oops will quartzite fade over time it should not fade over time um, there isn't really anything um, in that material uh, that would that should change the color of it. Now, if there is marble in said quartzite, the marble could patina over time. And again, that would be a, I would I would consider that a dolomitic material. When you look at materials like Taj Mahal, um, Red Dragon, uh, Calcutta, Brazil. There are true quartzites out there, tried and true quartzites that, that have proven themselves over time. Some of these newer colors you really need to, that are, that are being into the market, really try to find out um, what's in it. And a lot of times, you know, we have to take the word uh, of the actual, uh, the actual supplier of the, of the material um, at the quarries. We can't, it's, it is, it, it is tough to test the material um, because an entire slab may not etch um, and there could be marble in something and, and the only way to test it is to throw something acidic all over it um, and, and that is not something that's done. 
So, uh, you know, without ruining a slab, if, if we did that. So you, you, you have to buy from um, respected quarries who, who know what they're doing and, 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 and then you build that relationship. And over time, you know how the material is going to, going to react and perform and you know whether it's a true quartzite or not. So I would really rely heavily on the supplier um, that you're getting the material from and then talk to the fabricator as well about it. If there's ever a doubt, um, I call it a dolomitic marble, and, and, and that's because there generally will be dolomite in some of this material. So if it's a quartzite, it's not going to react. If, there, if, it, if it, I think it's going to react and there is dolomite or there is marble in it, then it's a dolomitic marble, which you still treat like a marble. It's just a harder material. It's a harder, more dense marble. Um, with granite, what drives price? Where the stone is located, what drives the price of quartzite? There's a lot. There's quite a few things that drive the price of granite. Um, exchange rates, um, what and and shipping costs. Um, if it's more rare, if it's not as consistent, uh, those things kind of drive price. There are materials that look the same every time you pull it out of the ground. Um, there's ample supply of it. Um, those are going to be uh, uh, lower price granites. And, and the, the more rare you get, the more movement, color, you know, blue is rare in, in natural stone. Uh, so blues are, are generally a little bit more expensive. And, and the same thing, price of quartzite. You know, uh, quartzite, is, is, it costs more to process um, the material. Uh, again, depending on where you're buying it from with exchange rates and, and shipping costs and everything that that drives it uh, the look of quartzite um, just the beauty of, of certain materials you know it's it's not as it's it's a little bit more rare so rarity drives up prices of, of natural stone as well um, let's see here can a polished material be refinished to look honed or leathered Yes, a, 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 any material, any natural material can be, um, can be honed, leathered, or you can take a honed material and polish it. So you can, you can exchange all those. There is an additional cost if it's not ordered that way when it's processed uh, from the quarry. Uh, but fabricators, not every fabricator can do it, um, but suppliers can, can ship those out to certain fabricators that they work with that can finish a material and how the customer likes it, how they prefer the, the texture. That being said, when, when you have a polished slab, when you hone it or leather it, it will change the look a little bit. So if you have the darks won't be as dark, if you have veining in it, let's say you have a, a really strong vein that runs through it, um, it kind of blurs the, it, it kind of takes out of focus is a way to, I, I guess I can say it. It's not as crisp. Uh, so it does definitely t change the look. And if clients want that honed or leathered, they generally have to pay for that up front before the slab gets processed. But you just have to set the level of expectation that the material will change slightly um, because the, the darks aren't as dark and the lights aren't as light. It almost kind of blends everything in a little bit together. The veining is still there and everything. It just isn't as, it isn't as crisp and clear when, it, when it's textured. Um, let's see here. Is Fantasy Brown a quartzite? No, Fantasy Brown is a dolomitic marble. Fantasy Brown will etch. Now, with etching, uh, I I don't mind it. I have I have a dolomite in my kitchen. I've etched it. I knew I would. To me, it doesn't take away uh, from the beauty of it. Um, but uh, I, we'll get we'll get into we'll get into the the marble here in a second. But um, yeah, fantasy brown had been called a quartzite. Some people have called it a granite. Some locations uh, there's you know some, some suppliers. Um, and, and some fabricators, uh, you know, there's just there's there's so many new materials out that people weren't really sure what they were, and and so they just called them certain things, and and 
you know, fantasy Brown will absolutely etch. Um, so there, it's definitely a, the, the true makeup is a dolomitic marble. Um, I think that is it on quartzite. Any more questions on the quartzite? All righty. So dolomite and marble. So again, dolomite is dolomite is um, just a more dense marble. So on the Mohs scale with marble, it's a three to a four. It's a natural material, so it comes out of the ground. Uh, it's heat resistant. It's less scratch, etch, and stain resistant than granite, quartzite, and engineered quartz. So it is a softer material than granite, quartzite, and engineered quartz. Again, mild soap and warm water to clean it, polish and textured finishes, and it's acceptable for kitchen and bath applications, but you need to know the expectations. So when I'm talking to clients about marble, you know, they come in and they, and they are totally against marble, and I ask them why, and, and you know, they, they think that they're going to scratch it, they're going to stain it, and um, the etching is really the only thing I would be, I am more concerned with when it comes to a marble, um, because you, you will, you will etch the material, um, and there's, there's no way around it. Uh, but to me, it still looks as to me, it's, it's still beautiful. I call marble a living finish. It ages with you. It patinas over time. Uh, it tells a story. The scratching, I just know I'm not going to, you know, you just don't cut directly on marble. You don't come home and throw your keys across your marble countertop. Um, if you're just doing normal things in the kitchen, you're not really going to scratch it. Um, and the stain, the, the staining, um, you know, it's just one of those things where if you, you know, you spill your red wine, your pasta sauce boils over and splashes on the, on the marble top, you know, wipe it up, you know, within a reasonable amount of time where people get in trouble is the, the late night, uh, evenings where they've, they've had a bottle or two of red wine and, and you get the ring on the bottom, um, of the wine bottle and set it on your marble top and forget about it um you know from friday night and then sunday morning you get up and start cleaning and and you may have a stain there um you know there are, there are ways that you could get that out um depending on how bad the stain is how long it's been there but stain you can get stains out of of um marble um Sometimes you can't, but I mean, you, there are ways to get it out or make it look less noticeable. Is there no way to fix etching? Uh, the way to fix etching would be to surface polish it again. And so you could have a professional come out and and surface polish it and then clean it up. Um, because it really, it just looks like a dull spot on the marble. So when you get into, when you see down here, uh, it comes in textured finishes. So there are a lot of people who do a textured marble, and so they'll get it honed. Generally, they'll do honed marble. And so what honing does, it actually hides the etching uh, better because it's not, again, your the etching is dulling the uh, the polish that is on the material. So if you honed it, you you've kind of you're kind of masking the reaction that it had because it's already it looks kind of honed already is what an etching etching does so you'll see people who prefer textured marbles if they're looking at marble now that you know that being said when i when we've got marble client people who are afraid of marble but they'll they'll put a they'll put a butcher block in their kitchen and so i talked to them about you know well you know butcher block and stain scratch and and everything else or they want concrete countertops and you know, concrete is way more porous and, and will stain way faster than marble. So, um, you know, it, um, you know, it just, it's just, you, it's just about educating the client. Does honing make it more porous? Marble is already, already porous. Um, honing it in the sense will open it a little bit more. Um, you would want to seal it more often um on, on marble just because it is more of a porous material but um 
Uh, let's see here. So I, you know, I, it, it does open the pores a little bit more when it's hung because then there isn't a polish on it. Um, so it has, it, it, I w it would say it would make it a little bit more um, prone to staining, but it hides the etching. So <laughs> I guess you got one, hand, you know, one way you can hide the etching and another way it may make it uh, a little bit more porous. But that's, again, that's just when you want to make sure you're cleaning your, you know, any, any spills you have on it. I've not stained mine. I've not scratched mine. I, I knew I would etch it, but I still think it's amazing. It's, it's beautiful material. Uh, are there treatments being done to the quarry to make marble stain resistant? Yes, there are. Um, there's actually a, uh, a factory in Italy that that has a uh, that has a sealer on marble that makes it etch and stain resistant. And so that's probably going to be where the future is going to be once once people realize that technology that they came up with. Um, it now you've gotten rid of two of the three things that people don't like about marble, but it's still you can still scratch it, but you it it will not uh, etch and it will not um, stain and it's it's a war it's a warranted material, so those are out there. Um, Antolini is the company name that is is the supplier of that material, of the of that technology. Um, let's see here, what are the ways for clients to remove stains? You know there are poultice there are poultice powders, um, and you know it's stuff that they could do from home. Um, I would probably contact the company, uh, the fabricator that put it in, and, and talk to them about coming out, um, because I would I would rather have an industry professional try to get stains out, and and if you wanted to have somebody come out and surface polish uh, to repair marble after years of, of of it being etched or whatever, and you just want to renew the finish, uh, you want to make sure a professional is doing that as well, and that you have to do the entire uh, run of your countertop. You just can't do one corner because then that would that may stand out worse than than the etching did over the time. Um, let's see here. Is this marble the same as what they use on floors? Um, Mar marble is, yeah, I mean, when you get marble flooring, marble tile, uh, it's the same thing that uh, would be on your countertops, just then if it's on the floor, it's just a thinner piece, uh, which is, again, that's why when, when people have uh, some hesitation about marble, uh, people walk on marble steps all the time. You know, I, I was over in Italy and visited factories and picked out material and, and was buying material, and, and the amount of marble that's over there just – everywhere i mean they had marble blocks uh for the seawall and and it just it just looks amazing but you know it, it's it's a living finish of patinas it's a beautiful material um it's just getting over some of the fears and what i tell clients is that you know if you're a person who ha when you're looking down your your countertop and and you see little etch marks and if that's going to drive you crazy you have to stay away from marble but if it's not, then let's let's look at marble as a, as a countertop because it is a timeless classic material. Um, how often do you recommend sealing marble? You know, I, I, that that's a question. It's almost to the the what the client thinks. Um, two to three years, I'd probably I'd probably do it again. I I didn't seal, I I haven't sealed mine, um, but uh, again, I, it's. Now I, I know natural stone and I know things will happen to it and I'm okay with it, but some clients obviously would not be. So they could um, they could seal it every every two or three years to make sure that they're staying on top of that um, and to help, you know, make that less stain uh, or, or more stain resistant. Oops. Sorry. This was tied to my mouse. Um, any other questions on marble? All righty. Get into travertine. Travertine is, um, you know, you're going to treat this, you're going to treat this like marble too. Um, 
it's another classic look. You see this more in the bathrooms. You see it in outdoor applications. Uh, it's on the most scale four to five. Um, it's a natural material. It, it, again, it's less heat, scratch, etch, and stain resistant than granite, quartzite, and engineered quartz. Uh, mild, just soap, warm water. Again, it comes in polished and textured finishes. People put it in kitchens. Um, again, you got to know the expectations. You will etch. Uh, you know, travertine will etch. Uh, travertine can stain. Um, it's a more porous material. And and you all, you also see it outside. You know, a lot of people put travertine, whether it's travertine block, tile, um, countertops, outdoor kitchens. So it's it's acceptable for outdoor applications. I wouldn't put marble out there. I don't. I, I think we did, we didn't have to. We didn't discuss that a minute ago. I would not put marble outside, but you can put travertine outside. Any questions on travertine? It, it's not really popular. You don't see it often, very often in, in kitchen applications, but you definitely see it in bathroom applications a lot more. All righty. Soapstone. So on the Mohs scale, this is this is number one on the Mohs scale in terms of, of hardness, or should I say just softness. It is the softest material uh, that is out there in terms of natural stone. It has a high heat resistance. Uh, it is non-porous, uh, etch and stain resistant, but it easily scratches. So soapstone is the stuff you would see in your in your school classrooms in the science labs. That was that's generally the material uh, that, well, that they used to use um, a long time ago. Soapstone was it. Soapstone uh, has a like I said a high heat tolerance. It you do not you do not seal uh, soapstone. It is a non-porous material and will not take the sealer. Uh, all you need is mild soap and warm water to clean. It's acceptable for kitchen and bath applications. It's great for outdoor applications. Uh, it, it holds heat, so you know that's something that you want to watch out to because it's a it's a very dense material, um, and it will hold the heat if it's if it's sitting out in the sun all day long in in the in the late summertime. Any questions about soapstone? All righty. Soapstone, I, I will say, you know, soapstone you can leave it natural. Um, or a lot of people will put like a mineral oil on it, and it, it enhances the uh, the look of it. It gives it kind of a wet look, and it really pulls the vein the veins out if there are veins in the actual soapstone of that of that particular of that slab or block. Um, but then you're looking at the maintenance of if you want to maintain that as it evaporates um, over a, f a few weeks, you'll need to you'll need to keep applying that to keep it looking that way. Um, but that's really the only maintenance that the soapstone has. I have soapstone in my house. I just left it natural. I don't, I don't, um, I, I just leave it as it is. It looks really cool when I clean it cause then it's wet and then all my veins pop out. But other than that, I just leave it natural. All right. Engineer quartz, the man, this is the man-made material. On the Mohs scale, it is a six and a half to seven. And I need to, I actually probably should change this um, because with the flood of the quartz market, it's become a lot more, there's a lot more resin in materials. So I would probably, I mean, you could maybe take this down to maybe a five to seven range. Um, it's engineered from natural materials, quartz, and, they, and there's added polymers, pigments, and resins. Uh, it's engineered to be heat, scratch, etch, and stain resistant, but it is not bulletproof. And not all quartz products are created equal. And that's why I really should change the, the Mohs scale. There isn't really, nobody can tell me how hard some quartz is, but fabricators know when they cut through it that some of it is softer than others because it, there is more resin in it. Um, and, and, in the, and, and the trying to drive the cost down of quartz and be more competitive, they're putting more resin in certain materials and to, to get more competitive in the marketplace. So that does affect the hardness scale of, of quartz, of engineered quartz. You need mild, just soap and warm water to clean it. 
polish and textured finishes. The textured finishes are fairly new. Um, it's acceptable for kitchen and bath applications. You cannot put quartz outside and you cannot put engineered quartz around a heat uh, source of, like a fireplace. If the fireplace is used as a heat source, you cannot put quartz around it. Um, if it's a decorative fireplace, then that's acceptable. Um, the quartz will crack around a fireplace if it's a heat source um, and it will bow and yellow and do everything else if it's sitting outside in an outdoor application. And it's the resin that's the resin that's in it that's what's reacting to those um, those elements. Any questions on quartz, engineer quartz? I get a lot of people who come in and, and they, they want to, you know, they, they ask for quartz and they say that they, they're, they're too um, rough with their countertops and, you know, they just heard granites, um, you know, a lot of maintenance and it can stain easier. And but what they don't realize is you cannot take a, a pot of boiling water and take it right off the oven and set it right on right on quartz because you can scorch the finish on it. And I don't care what quartz company it is. And again, we sell quartz, um, but every quartz warranty, there is no warranty if you burn it, scratch it, or stain it. And so if you really read the fine, proof, fine print, you will see that it is not bulletproof, um, but it is, it's a great, it, it is a great countertop application. It's very popular. The client needs to understand that there are limitations in it, even though it's engineered to be um, heat scratch stain resistant. You can still burn it, scratch it, and stain it. If if you if you are just negligent with certain things, and again, you don't cut directly on quartz. Uh, use a cutting board for that, and um, you don't take heat source things with heat source and set it right on the right on the right on the finish either. Use a trivet or a, a heating pad. Large format porcelain. This is becoming more popular um, as a surface material for kitchens and baths. Uh, on the most scale, it's a seven to nine. So it's an engineering material. It is the hardest, uh, most heat scratch and stain resistant material of all the materials we have discussed today. Again, mild soap and warm water to clean. It comes in polished and textured finishes. It's acceptable for kitchen and bath applications, acceptable for any application, indoor and outdoor, and commercial applications. This material can go anywhere um, that you have a thought about putting something anywhere. I can, it, it can, it's your, whatever your imagination is, this material can go there. Um, it, this, this takes, there's more labor involved with this material, especially on a countertop. You cannot take this material if it's under a half inch or half inch or under and just set it right on the countertop. If it's a half inch or under, you have to build an underlayment and you almost have to, you have to miter and laminate it. So it almost looks, it's almost like laminate in that sense that there's a, there is a base built and then you wrap the porcelain around it and, uh, and then put it on your countertop. It is the it's the highest heat. It, this is about 2200 degrees before you will um, burn it. So uh, and then it's a porcelain material, so it's extremely scratch and stain resistant. And it's getting more popular. It is the most realistic looking engineered material that's on the market. And if anybody is asking, the cost is generally on the higher end just because the amount of labor that's involved to do this and not every fabricator is going to um, cut porcelain so if 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 you're in the market looking do some research on the fabricators who do it because some some won't touch it it's just a it's a different um, animal in terms of fabrication but it's a it's an amazing material that can go anywhere your client has a dream about it they, you can put it anywhere It's more porcelain in a bathroom. It was porcelain yeah, on the floor. Excuse me. Yes. It's yep. Deb. Yep. We're not hearing you. 
Really? Derek, are you there? You, you can't hear me? Deb. Deb. Hello? You're good. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Thank you. That is, that is weird. What happened? I'm not sure. There was <laughs> there were some questions here um, that I'm not sure that you saw, Derek. So can I give them to you now? Yes. I, I'm sorry. I don't know what. I'm just sitting here talking. I wonder why I got really quiet. And nobody started talking anymore. No worries. So here's a couple questions. Here's one on soapstone. There's actually three on soapstone. Um, do you have to put oil on it? Can you buff out a scratch? Um, and how etch resistant is it? How is it that it's etch resistant yeah. but easily scratches? Uh, I'm yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now all the now all these are here. They weren't. I, it just stopped responding. No for worries. Some reason as I'm going through this. All right. So, um, travertine is great for flooring. Okay. Um, you put oil on soapstone. It, you can put it. It again. It is a. Did you guys hear me talking about that at the time or no? Is that when I went out? No, I think you're good on that. Okay, you you heard me talk about oil on the soapstone. I did. Okay, all right. Sorry. And then, um, yes, if you scratch soapstone, uh, as long as it's not deep enough, you can uh, sandpaper, uh, and you can get scr minor scratches out of soapstone. Um, it is etch resistant. Um, somebody asked, how is it etch resistant yet easily scratched? Etching is etching is a chemical reaction to the material, um, so uh, it won't react to a chemical, so it won't etch. But scratching is different, uh, and I know etching can be confused with scratching because it sounds like it, an etch can sounds like it could be a scratch. But um, etching is a chemical reaction to a certain makeup of a material um, to whatever is introduced to it. And then scratching is just you taking a, a knife or a key and, and scratching it along the along the top. Um, what can be used on top of soapstone? I heard beeswax. Um, you can do that. Um, like I said, mineral oil. Uh, a lot of people do mineral oil on it. Um, let's see here. Is true white quartz the best quartz used and engineered? True white quartz. Um, as in, I, I guess the question, when when they're making engineered quartz, they do use ground up white quartz as part of the the batter, if you will, um, when they're making the material. So yes, you need to when they're when they're pro, when they're making the material at the factories, they want the whitest of white quartz so that they're they can when they're doing their coloring, they're adding their color to it. it it's a it's it's a true color. Um, how can we determine the resin content? So it used to be nine, the resin content on quartz used to be 93.7, uh, 93% natural quartz, ground up quartz, and 7% resins and polymers and stuff like that. Uh, supplier factories are, are um, not uh, very forthcoming anymore on what the percentages are. It's very difficult to find that. Um, the fabricator knows when they're cutting into a quartz slab whether there's a 93% quartz content or a 80% quartz content. Um, there, there are a lot of, of great companies out there, and then there are a lot of companies that have wanted to try to get into the market and have flooded it with cheaper engineered quartz, and those are the ones that are going to have a lot more, more resin content. Um, let's see here. Is there the same warranty on marble? There really, there really isn't a warranty on natural stone. Now, the fabricator may put a warranty on the sealer that is provided from the company that's putting the sealer, but there isn't a warranty on natural stone. And again,
and the quartz warranties are really on defects, defective material. If you damage quartz, there isn't a warranty on that, but they will, if it was a defective material, then that's where the warranty really kicks in on any quartz company, any quartz product. On the quartz, we should not recommend using around a fireplace at the fireplace for any heating in, in the space. That is correct. Um, you do not put quartz around a, a heat source, a, a, a um, fireplace that is a heat source. And you do not want to cut directly on quartz. Um, you can maybe do some light cutting, but really if you're trying to cut through uh, gristle or something on meat, uh, you want to use a cutting board. Um, what's your opinion regarding radon concerns in granite? Um, there are no radon concerns on granite. Um, there's more granite or there's more radon coming out of the ground outside and in your basement than comes off of a, of a processed slab of granite that's in your kitchen or bath. Um, is porcelain always solid color or other patterns? Yeah, there, there are tremendous looking patterns of marble um, on the porcelain. And there are also solid colors. Uh, the thickness of porcelain, um, they've got three millimeter, they've got six millimeter, which is a quarter inch, and then a, a, a 12 millimeter, which is a half inch, and 2CM is coming. There are some 2CMs out there right now, two centimeter porcelains that are out there. Uh, the technology is getting better. How does large format porcelain compare to fire clay? Um, large format porcelain, um, there's a little bit of flex to it. Uh, it's a through body porcelain. Um, so it's not a glazed material in the sense that if you were to chip it, um, it's not um, clay or gray underneath, like a clay red color or, or gray. Um, so uh, it's, 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 a superior in terms of um, the technology that's with these large format porcelain is superior to, to fire clay in that sense. Does it come in different colors like quartz? Yes, porcelain is comes in several colors. And the neat thing about porcelain is if you had a designer or a client with an unlimited budget, they could actually uh, put a picture of anything they wanted on a porcelain slab and, and, and get it done or create a, a different, their own color. Uh, is it brittle? It's brittle in the sense that if you, if the raw material itself, the slab that, that isn't in an application, if you hit it with a hammer, you would break it off. Um, if, if it's, if it's installed and it's installed correctly, um, where there are no air pockets between the porcelain and the underlayment that it is to, um, it can take, so it can take a beating a little bit. I mean, you know, you can you can chip it, you can crack it, but normal uh, wear and tear in a kitchen, you'll be fine with with porcelain once it's inside. It's it's part of the part of the cost of it is the labor and the material handling on the fabrication side. But once it's in, it's um it's a pretty solid material. <clears throat> Let's see here. You can hear me fine. Okay. Now we all, you guys can hear me. That's where I am now. Okay. All right. Any more questions to that? What domestic options do we have for stones and engineered? So there's a, there's a company called Polycore um, that, that produces material uh, in the United States that mines material. Um, but they also, they take the blocks and then they ship them to Italy and have them processed and then they ship them back over here. We don't have a processing plant here. Vermont Danby is another, um, where there's a lot of marbles that come out of Vermont, out of the Vermont Danby side. So that's another option uh, domestically. Uh, engineered uh, wise would be, uh, really Cambria is the only one that I know that is, that is uh, American made at this point regarding um, engineered material. Uh, as far as uh, quartz, let's see here. Um, are there different grades of quartz? Uh, yes, in the sense that, um, again, you, you, you have to look at the resin content and, and that's going to, you know, the higher the quartz content, the more uh, resistant to things it will be. Um, my opinion on the new nanotech material, Phoenix. I, I don't know enough about that to answer that question. I apologize. All right. So are we all looking at this uh, this building here that has a, 
that has this is porcelain on the outside of this building so that's just to give you an idea that's porcelain um, on that facade are we seeing that right now Sorry, can you guys hear me or no? We're good. Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Um, so other surfaces. Um, onyx on the Mohs scale is a seven. Um, precious stone. So, you know, there are precious gemstones out there that, that you can make it that have been made into slabs. And so the scale on that is anywhere from three and a half to seven, depending on the material. Uh, concrete again on the most scales of three to seven uh, region it, it varies by region and the the types of uh, I guess the the types some of the types of um, agate that they put in to the to the concrete limestone is a three to four slate is a two to four recycled glass uh, resin based Mohs scale six and a half to seven. So that is a resin based recycled glass will act like a engineered quartz product. Um, a resin a recycled glass based in concrete is going to act like a concrete uh, slab. Um, if I'm going recycled glass, I'd recommend using the resin based uh, concrete recycled glass is going to be way more porous. It's going to stain easier. The, re the glass can actually pop out in, in applications. Um, so the resin base, it's all glued in, will act just like an engineer quartz product. Um, stainless steel, Mohs scale, five and a half to six and a half, and then glass. You know, I, I just put through some of these in there, you know, just to kind of give you a, an idea of, of natural stone materials, kitchen and bath applications, just some of the other things that you see out there. Um, got a couple questions here real quick. Um, I've had, I, I, in terms of working with lava stone, um, I've sold some. I've not worked with it. There's, I've had a few slabs in of that, um, of some of that material that had, that's made from that. But um, I've never, uh, I've, I've not worked with it in that sense. Um, what do seams look like on porcelain? You know, I mean, if you, you can almost eliminate the seams if you do, if you do 40, if you 45 each of them and then pull them right together. Um, there won't be a seam. Um, you can do a, a, a eighth of an inch, a uh, 16th of an inch. You can make it as tight as you want. And if they're book matched, you can really, um, really hide that seam. Um, if you're using porcelain on the counter, how thick is the material? So if you're using porcelain on the counter, um, the underlayment is what's going to generate the thickness. So porcelain right now the the 12 millimeter um is the most popular out there right now which is a half inch so they will put a half inch porcelain slab on top of the underlayment and generally they're going on if it's on a if it's on a perimeter um it's going to be about a, it's going to look like it's a 3cm thickness uh because you can't drop the apron down too too far because then you won't be able to get into your drawers on the islands, people have made them look a lot thicker. You know, you can you can really drop and and put a 10, 12 inch apron all the way around it, mitered all the way around um, if you don't have drawers or, or, or cabinets underneath there. So you can make it look you can make it look as thin or as thick as you want. Um, let's see here. There's my other surfaces. This these are pictures. We're at the end. Um, so are there any other questions? Derek, this has been great. It's been excellent. I want, I want to thank you for your time and your expertise and uh, all of you for staying with us for an extra couple of minutes here. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realize I was. No, we're fine. Heard. This is fine. It's fine. And I want to thank Kohler once again for generously sponsoring today's session. Have a great day. Derek, thanks again. No, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.